Greetings from Maltman Court. This is my 2001 Sea-Doo Spark Trix 2-Up. I got it a little over a week ago, but I've spent the past week putting the accessories on its companion, a 2021 uh, Fish Pro. So when these came in, the Ergolock knee pads were not, uh, had not arrived. So I, uh, I just picked them up today, they came in. So that's what I'm gonna do a video of here. I think these are gonna be a little bit easier uh, than what uh, transpired with the Fish Pro, although they turned out just fine. Uh, if you look at the other video that I have of installing those, the sticky back tape was a royal pain in the butt. But these ones uh, just involve some hardware, a little bit of drilling, uh, and I think there's no sticky tape, so that should be a little bit better. So if you open up the, uh, the box, you will have the instructions, www.instructions.brp.com, and then type in product, the product code from the label, which in this case is 295-100-810. That nine-digit code will pop up the instructions uh, on how to do it. The first step is going to be uh, to pull off uh, both sides uh, of this plastic. It's relatively easy. Just grab it in the back corner and it pull, pull out and it comes out. You'll see two hooks that fit in the front part and there's also a small tongue that also fits in the front part and the last uh, piece is actually a uh, a pin, plastic pin that goes into this rubberized stopper in the side and that's the part you just pull out. So reversing the process you're just going to thread those pieces in and push down. All right the knee pad itself looks pretty good. Uh, it's made of I think it's slightly different uh, in texture and feel to the Ergolock knee pad that I put in on the the Fish Pro. So I'm kind of excited about that. They're also bigger than I thought they were. Um, they're going to go over this, this plate. Um, at first I thought I'd be drilling into the sticker. So if I ever wanted to take it off, um, I'd be out of luck. Uh, but I think that uh, the drilling will be off to the side. So it won't be too visible if for whatever reason you wanted to take them off and go back with the, the numbered, uh, numbered uh, sticker on. The side of the plastic but I doubt that'll be the case so I'm gonna get out the instructions and uh, see if I can get this thing together. So I printed off the template that was on the BRP website and it notes that it should be to scale and it gives a, a number value for the length of the cutout you're supposed to make and I'm assuming that's in millimeters but it doesn't say but then it has a scale that has uh, uh, five inches laid out and then it has a scale within it of 50 millimeters up against each other. I've got two master's degrees uh, with heavy math and I couldn't figure it out. But what I did know is that when I cut them out and I paste them on to the uh, plastic, they didn't line up with the with the holes where um, the holes that are in the heavy part of the rubber backside where the bolts are supposed to go in or the screws are supposed to go in with the washers. So I threw that out the window. So what I've decided to do is to do a different tactic. And there are these small holes where you're supposed to line up. Um, you're supposed to drill the holes and then line them up. So what I've done is um, I've taken a small finishing nail Okay, and I stuck it point first into the hole what I'm going to use and I pushed it in until it stopped. Okay, didn't want to push it all the way through but I pushed it in so it went to the bottom. And then I marked that, pulled, put my nail on and I marked it. And then I came out and I grabbed a, a pair of uh, cutters and I sliced it off so that I got a smaller piece about like this, that has a pointy end, but I've cut it off on the other end. And then what I've done is I've just stuck it in that hole, so it just barely peeks out. There's just a, a point. When I rub along the edge, there's a point. 
And then I took the, the piece of plastic and I lined, lined it up, lined it up around the rest of it and then I pushed it together and it made a small mark on the plastic. And then I did the same thing down here and then I drilled out the hole uh, with a small bit, like an eighth inch bit. And then what I did was I put the, I put the nail, a full size nail back in and just made sure that they lined up with those holes. So I knew that those small holes were lined up. And now I'll just take my quarter inch bit as they suggest, and I'll, I'll make those holes bigger. And then I'll put my bolts in and I'll see how everything else lines up. One alternative that you could do to transfer it is instead of using the nail, you could use some type of Vaseline or some type of cream that's not going to affect the rubber. And you put a dollop in where each of the holes are and you squeeze the, the other piece inside straight down and then pull it off and that'll give you an idea as to where you need to drill. And you can also line it up um, and just sort of take a peek and you can get a sense of where it's at. So the template would be a lot easier, but I have no idea how to scale it on my computer, uh, which is a PDF file uh, and make it work because it just didn't seem to work for me. So this is what I've done and uh, it appears to uh, have lined up at least for these two. So I'll, uh, I'll get those bolts in and you'll see. So I got those, those holes lined up and I increased the size from like an eighth of an inch up to um, a quarter inch drill size as they suggest. And then I've taken my, um, the screws that they provide with uh, a rubber uh, top to it. And then I got a, a 5 sixteenths um, attachment onto my driver so that'll fit on there and now I'm gonna I'm gonna screw those two in so I have to drill two holes into the plastic on this upper part here. And I've done the exact same trick. I've put the, the pointy nail into the hole and pushed down and it's made a mark. And then I've done the same on the other side. So now I'm gonna drill those holes. So I've drilled both holes. And what I've done is I put them back into place and I've slid just some finishing nails into the holes so that I know I'm lined up. So now I can put the, these type of bolts over here and I know that it's secure and then it'll be a very easy task of going along and drilling these ones out and putting them in and it'll all be nice and secure. Okay, so um, I, I've taken a beer break because uh, after all that hard and good work, I thought I was kind of foobard. I got this knee pad on and I hope I never have to take it off again. The other side is where you access your safety kit. So that one I'll have to be able to get back on and off again. There's a problem and a challenge of getting this on. There's two cleats um they're about as wide as uh wide as your first knuckle uh and they have to go 
up into wedges. <laughs> Normally, without this pad on, that's an easy thing. You just tilt it in, it connects it in all the way up, and then you push the this part down and that pin goes into that rubber socket I talked to you about. But with all of this bulk, uh, it's not easy to, to get leverage. There's a lot of foam in here between this and that thin piece of plastic that had the zero one on it. So it's not easy. And I was trying and I was trying, I was trying. I have a light, light on, uh, I took the other side off. I have a light on in there and I was checking it. I could get the front piece in but I couldn't get the back piece in. I'll take a picture of it. What a pain. And, and, the, and one of the, uh, the rear part, the trouble, the one that was getting, not getting in was bending over, straighten it up. And you can see the black plastic is going white. So you go back and forth uh, for a while. It has a shelf life, as I say. So I was worried that I was gonna have that tab snapped off and then I'd have to improvise something. I'm sure I could get something, but who wants to do that? on a brand new ski so it's on i really like it it's in there good i'll show you the picture uh, they're really uh, substantial they're more substantial than the fish pro i in my estimation uh, ergo lock knee pads on the fish pro which are here they're not as thick the fish pro that is So anyway, I'm very happy as long as I don't have to ever have to take it off. Okay, so I will uh, I'll do the same process on the other side. I won't show it unless I, I learn something new. Uh, I'll just conclude by how I get the other one on and see if there's any technique that I can use, that I can recommend to, to get it up and in there. So I did the other one and um, and I revisited the directions, and in the directions they warned me about this. But I obviously didn't go down that far when I'm talking about trying to get these two tabs into the, the spot. They have engineered in here some a groove to allow you to pull this stuff away. And I'd really, I had seen that, and I, and I was trying to do it, but they do mention in the directions to put it back on. So I'm going to try and put this back on here you can see here's your uh, your safety kit with your uh, your whistle and your flashlight and bailing bucket and your tow line um, i also uh, laminated or i have a vacuum sealer um, so i chamber vacuum sealed some some fresh batteries and also a copy of my registration in there so it's all folded up so I'm going to try and put this on now. Still a pain. I'll see if I can get it on. Eureka, I got it on. Uh, that was easier. I, what I should have done before uh, was just very aggressively pinch that, pinch the padding backwards and then stick it up in, push it, and then put the uh, um, push the pin into the rubber socket at the back. So, yeah, they look. I w when I first saw the tricks with the numbered sticker uh, on the, on the internet and the promotional materials, I thought, wow, that looks really cool. Uh, I'm not sure I want to cover that up, but now that I have these Ergolock pads on, no doubt. You're going to get tossed around on this, and this is going to make a huge difference uh, riding it for someone with old bones and, and my son, who will probably live on the thing as soon as he's allowed to drive it. Uh, it's interesting they put they've also embossed into the the foam pad um, the SOS uh, label just like underneath, saying this is where you uh, this is where you go to to pull the tab out in order to get the uh, safety kit. So, uh, those are lock knee pads. Uh, it was, it was difficult with those tabs. Um, and again, the template thing didn't work, but that little pin, that little uh, pin nail trick where you just, just cut the, the head of the 
finishing nail off to the depth of the foam hole where the drill, I'm sorry, where the, the bolts or screws are going to go in. And just so that the pin, the sharp part is uh, lifting or poking out just a bit and then just put one into the other and it, it lined up perfectly. And then I put the uh, small drill bit through like an eighth of an inch through all around and then checked it with, uh, with a finishing nail just so that it was lined up. Finish it with a quarter inch. Put those uh, screws in with the washers and then you could just go around with your quarter inch drill. You don't need to uh, size down and then size up. Uh, and then just put those push pins in, those black uh, push pins, bumper, bumper pins uh, all around. And then your only tricky part is getting those, getting those pins into the, um, into the holes and this back down given the amount of bulk that you have. But yeah, I, I'm really impressed with those. I, they weren't cheap. I think they were probably $150 or something like that. They give you a discount if you're buying a ski or you bought one from them before. Most dealers will give you between 15 and 20% off. So uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm very pleased with that. And uh, that's the last of the accessories that I that I bought that I've put on. Um, I got the uh, I got the covers, but uh, I'm not sure that they're very exciting. I don't know. Maybe the Fish Pro has some access hatches, and if it's, there's something interesting, I'll I'll do something on that. Uh, I think I'm going to put the uh, charging accessory um, wiring into the Fish Pro uh, to charge your cell phone in the waterproof compartment.